Hi, it's Palmy here, and in today's video, we're going to be continuing with the 10 tips and tricks that help me to achieve my goals with Dash Studio, which is to create this heroic story here, Tiger Dragon The Rebirth, a story that's going to entertain you, empower you, and inspire you. And in part two, we're going to be covering tips six to 10. So if you haven't seen part one, I recommend you go and see that right now. Link is in the description down below. So definitely go and watch that first, get the learnings from there, and then come back to part two and continue learning with Dash Studio. So without further ado, let's jump into part two of the tips and tricks that have helped me to achieve my goal. That's also gonna help you to get better as a Dash 3D artist. Tip number six, apply only pose rotations. Now, don't you hate it when you've just downloaded a, a pose set, but it's attached to a specific scene with that pose, right? And you double click on that pose, and it moves your character, right? It moves your character and poses them as well. But you only wanted the pose from that particular scene, right? This tip's gonna help you with that. So what do I mean by this? Let me show you an example of this right now. Cause there are many times that I have poses that are associated with the scene. You double click on that and it will move the character into that scene, but also create the pose as well. You don't want that. I only want the pose cause I like the pose, uh, but I want the pose to be apply to my character in the current position they are at here, for example. So let me go and show you the example of this. So I've got my characters tab here, group tab here, and I've got Genesis 8 here. I'm hiding Genesis 9 at the moment because we don't need that right now for this example. And I'm gonna click on Tattoo here, make sure that it's selected. I'm gonna go to my Smart Content tab here, expand default, go to Poses, and I'm gonna expand Function, and click on Scene Position, right? So these are the ones, for example, where if I double click on them, the character is gonna move into that scene position in that scene, cause it's related to that scene and it will move to that position in the scene and it will also apply the particular pose. So the example I'm going to use is this one here. So when I double click on this, I watch my character move. It's also gonna apply the pose as well though. So that's kind of cool, right? I want the pose, but I want my character to make the pose here. So there it is, right? So my character has done the pose that I want, but it's moved to position. How annoying is that, right? Very annoying. So let me edit and undo that first. So what do we do here? It's a very simple tip, and that is keep control pressed on your keyboard here, which I'm doing right now, you can see on the screen. And I'm gonna now double click on the same pose. And this option comes up, pose preset load options. So this is gonna allow you to just apply the rotations which is the actual pose here and not do anything else so what i want to do in this situation is i want to turn off the scale because that's not important the translation i don't want to move my character right so i don't want to change the scale of my character and i don't want to change the translation i just want to change the rotations from the root okay the root being tatsu here right so everything from the hip up and the hip down it's going to apply this pose. So I'm gonna do accept, and you'll notice that it'll apply the pose, and it's gonna be in the same position here. There you go, right. So it's applied it in the same position here, and obviously the pose needs work, but that is a very important tip. It's gonna help you a lot. Now, obviously it's not gonna put it in the exact position where the character was, because obviously the character was standing, but at least the character's not moved into some other crazy place in the, in the viewport, right? So wherever this scene was created, whatever the particular X, Y, Z translation is for that scene, for this particular pose, it won't move it there. It will just do the rotations for the for the actual pose. That I use this all the time, very helpful. Um, I'm grateful that I found this tip. I believe I found it on the DAS 3D forums, I believe. But this is a tip that's helped me out a lot. So very helpful, very quick tip there that's gonna help you to make the most of your poses that you have in your content library. Tip number seven, lock your camera position and depth of field if you're using it. And if you aren't using depth of field, you should be. It's gonna to add to the quality of your renders, make it a lot more professional. And it's definitely gonna show that you are really thinking about your renders and use it depth of field wherever possible, right? So I, in my graphic novel, I will use depth of field wherever possible because you don't always need to show the background all the time. You can blur that out and you can focus on specific aspects on a panel to create that tension, that moment that you're only focusing on a particular character, their thoughts, right? And you're blurring everything out and it gives that effect that 
I just want you as the reader to focus on this particular character, ignore the background, right? That's depth of field. That's a different tutorial regarding depth of field, but yes, uh, lock the composition and depth of field. I'm gonna tell you why. So the number of times where I have been creating a scene and I've got my camera, right? I've set my camera up for in this, in this case, for example, like I've set it up and I'm like, yeah, that's great, awesome. And then I go and start to do something else. Maybe I'm posing something and I like accidentally forget that my camera is still selected, right? This one here, the main one, where I've just spent ages trying to find this perfect position for this particular scene, right? Like, yes, this is the one. And then I go on movie and I'm like, oh man, now I've just moved it around and I didn't realize like I lost the camera position. And then you're frantically trying to get it back and everything. Uh, the number of times that's happened is just like ridiculous. So what I've decided to do, this is again a workflow tip, is like once I found the camera position and I'm happy with it, I go to my camera and I lock it, right? I lock the X translate, I lock the Y, the Z, the X, and the rotate as well. I lock all that, right? I lock everything. So now I can't move it, right? It's stuck there. Awesome, fantastic. I can, can't make that mistake and then I will just create another camera or use a perspective camera to move around my scene to check certain poses and make sure everything's okay, lighting, etc., and all that other stuff. My camera is locked, it's not going anywhere. I highly recommend you do that, to lock that camera, right? Because I'm sure there will be times you find this like brilliant camera like position and you slightly moved it out the way, you're like, oh man, I've just lost that and now I've got to find it again. It's just annoying, right? Let's not make that mistake. Let's use our, let's be more intentional. Let's use this as a workflow technique where I lock it and then I can always unlock it, right? Like let's say for example, oh, you know what? I don't like this camera angle. Let me just go and unlock it. It just takes a little bit of time. It's not a problem, right? The issue is when you lose that perfect camera position or the not perceived perfect, right? They're not something as a perfect anything, but you found the best camera angle for this scene and you're like, I've lost it now. I've got to like redo it again. And it's just annoying. It's not a, another complication you need in your workflow, right? You need to get this workflow right. So that's why I, I always lock my camera now. So I don't have any issues about moving it. I'm like, when I can't, when it does move, I was like, oh yeah, because I locked it. Awesome. Good thinking, right? Good thinking, Palmy. Well done, you locked your camera. Now just, you haven't lost that particular um, camera view, that camera angle that you wanted. It looks great. Again, this applies to the depth of field. So what you'll see is when I go to camera here, so currently the depth of field is off, that's fine. You're not using it, but let's say you're using it. So I'm gonna turn it on. Sometimes when I'm going through here, the scene here, I'll use my mouse wheel and you'll notice when I start using my mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out, because that's what I do sometimes instead of using this here on this camera here. Let's say for example, I forgot that the camera is locked and I start using my mouse wheel. You'll see the focal distance starts to move. So as I'm using my mouse wheel, nothing's happening to the camera, obviously, it's not going anywhere, but the depth of field is moving and you can see the number here moving. So pay attention to this focal distance number here. As I'm moving my scrolling my mouse wheel here, back and forward, you can see the depth of field is moving here, right? And um, that happens to me sometimes accidentally. So what I do now is once I have got my depth of field correct, I will again lock the depth of field, I will lock the f stop as well just to make sure. So now when I use my mouse wheel, nothing's happening and I have got my scene set for the camera angle. Now I can go and do other things in the scene like maybe work on the background if I need to or whatever I need to do, right? That's what I highly recommend is you lock the camera, lock the depth of field. If you're using it, you should be using it. That's a tip there right there. You should be using the depth of field and because it's going to add to the quality of your renders. And that's, this is a workflow tech tip here. So I do this all the time now, I lock it. And I'm very annoyed when I don't lock it because I've it just, just it just saves time, right? Once I've locked everything in position, I can always go back and unlock it. But if you want to work on other things, like for example, the pose, you maybe want to work on the expression, right? To get the right emotional uh, content out of that scene and everything. And maybe they're talking and you want to put a specific expression on their face to show why they're talking like this. They could be angry or shouting, so you want an angry expression, right? You can work on the expression or the eyes or whatever uh, in terms of where they're looking and everything. So you can just focus on that and you don't have to worry about accidentally moving the camera around or messing around with the uh, with the uh, depth of field. Just a tip that I uh, recommend uh, as a workflow tip, use that to help you when you're creating your renders. Tip number eight, quickly reset parameters to zero. Sometimes you'll want to have, you've got multiple parameters that you are using and you want to reset everything back to zero. So the tip, this tip, I use this a lot for expressions and sometimes you do for poses as well, but mostly it's like expressions and to do with the actual eyes and everything. I want everything back to neutral expression so I can work from a blank expression and get the expression right. 
So sometimes I will have multiple dials that are turned on for to make a specific expression happen. That's what you have to do, right? There's not just one expression that will work. Sometimes you need to have two, three, four, maybe even five dials that are turned on that you're using. That's going to help you to create the expression. And then you want to turn them off. Now, the quickest way to do that is to turn everything back to zero is to use Alt and then left click on the particular parameter. So, so let me show you how this works to remove this particular expression back to like neutral expression. So I'm going to go to my C, click on my character Tatsu here. I'm going to go to parameter that you currently use. I'm going to scroll through all of these, right? Because there's lots of morphs on for this character, like crazy amount. And here we are as I scroll down, you can see here I'm using the uh, auto face enhance angry expression. I want to turn that to zero. And I've got multiple things here that I want to turn off. So as I scroll down, I've got scream here, afraid, shock and silly, HD. These are just an example, right? So if I had to turn them off, I would have to click on here and type in zero and do that, right? That's like not a great ex use of your time. Again, this is like a workflow one uh, tip here. So I will scroll down and all I need to do now is keep Alt pressed on my keyboard and then I just click on the numbers here. So for Afraid HD, I wanted to set that back to zero. Click on that, click on Scream. I'm still keeping Alt pressed. I'm not letting go. And all I'm doing is just clicking on the particular values that I want to turn for the parameters to zero. I'm left clicking on that, left clicking on that. There you go, right? It's gone back to normal or gone back to uh, the default expression, so to speak. And we can do the same here, right? I can click all these here if I wanted to go through each one and click on all of them until they're all gone back to normal here. So I can go through all of these, keeping Alt pressed, left clicking on each of them, putting them back to their either their zero position or their neutral or their default position, right? You're, you're the default value uh, associated with the particular whatever you're doing, right? Particular expression that you've already got on. Or maybe sometimes you remove expression and it doesn't turn everything back to zero. Now you can go and do that as well very quickly. And I've done that very, very quickly. And you can see we've changed that. So that's a very quick tip. If you want to turn off multiple parameters very quickly, keep Alt pressed and then go through the ones that you want to turn to the default value or to zero. You just left click on it and it will do that. It will turn it to either zero or turn it to the default value associated with whatever other um, expressions or morphs you've got available. It will just turn it back to the default value. So I highly recommend uh, using that workflow tip. Help me a lot so many times, right? Sometimes I have multiple expressions for scenes. Sometimes I'll use the same scene. So let's say, for example, this is a, a panel here, my graphic novel, and then I'm going to have a particular expression. Save that, right, that's done. Now I'm going to turn that to neutral because now I need a different expression now. Whatever that expression is, I need to work on that one. So turn everything on very quickly using this tip here and then start again from a blank canvas. I hope you're enjoying this video here, but we're going to take a quick break to mention our sponsors for this video, which is my book here, Tiger Dragon The Rebirth. This is a heroic action fantasy story that's going to entertain you, empower you, and inspire you. This is, the, this is a story that I've created using the skills that I learned from Dash Studio and skills that I've learned from reading books about storytelling. And the reason why I wanted to create a heroic story is because I want to see more heroic stories, right? The heroic stories that I grew up with when I was a kid in the 80s and in the 90s and even now, like we're talking Avengers here, right? And the t-shirt that I'm wearing because I want to see more stories like that where you see a hero overcome their obstacles, they overcome their doubts, their fears, and then they go on achieve their goals, right? They go and save somebody. They go and, you know, save the people they love. They go and just save a stranger maybe because they don't know because they're in danger. This villain is doing things that are not, they should not be doing. And they need to, this, this person who's going to be in danger, right? And they need to go and save them. So that's what I want to do. I want to create more stories like that because those are stories that I grew with. That's those are stories that I love. Those are the stories that lit me up right all the time. These are stories I would run home from school from, right? From school. The first thing I want to do, I want to go home and watch these heroic stories. I don't want to miss them out. I don't want to miss out on them. I want to watch them and I want to like um, absorb them and I want to be entertained. I want to be empowered and inspired, right? And that is why I wanted to create this story here. So if that's something you want to check out, if you want a heroic story that's going to entertain you, empower you, and inspire you, uh, link is in the description down below and also in the pinned comments. Go and you can read 24 pages, right? Go and sign up to the, the email list and you can read 24 pages of this 176 page heroic story that's going to entertain you, empower you, and inspire you. Now let's get back to the video so you can learn those amazing Dash Studio skills that will help me to create this story right here. 
Tip number nine, use the thirds guide for scene composition. Now Dash Studio has this free in this software and I'm ashamed to say I never used it at the beginning because I didn't know what it was. However, I've done the work and learned what it was and how to use it effectively, right? In my graphic novel, when I created my scenes, how to use a thirds guide for scene composition. So where do you find this thirds guide? It's over here, you click on this menu button here and it says here, show thirds guide. And what it does, it splits whatever your viewport is, whatever ratio your viewport is, it splits it into thirds. This is fantastic, right? Because what this does now is it allows you to work on scene composition. And this is all to do with photography. And if you want to learn more about that, go to YouTube, right? Do the work. Go and do go to YouTube, type in photography, thirds guide, or even into a web page or whatever, right? Go and learn that skill yourself. Understand what it means, how it works, because I'm not going to explain everything here. I'm not an expert in photography. I'm sure someone can explain it way better than I can. But I'm going to give you like the brief, very, very brief, like rundown of the thirds guide. Thirds guide is used for scene composition and basically it's to make the scene more pleasing to the eye. That's what it's all about. Now with thirds guide, what you can do, for example, is the way it works. Let's say, let's say how it works first. So for example, let me get my little pen tool here. That's going to help to explain it in better detail. So you've got your, your thirds guide here. So you got your like one third here, your other third and another third here, right? And same here at the bottom. So another third, another third, a third. Another third here. And what you want to do ideally is place the item of importance on this particular lines, right? So maybe on this line here, or maybe on this line here, or maybe on this line here, or maybe on this line here, right? And if you want to be really like OCD, you probably would place it on right here in the intersection here of each of these points here, right? You might want to place it on the intersection here. That's being like really, really a bit too on the nose there with the thirds guide. That's what you would ideally want to do. You'll see this in images all the time where you'll see like there's a character, there's a photo photography of a lot of like negative space here. Let's say for them, let's get rid of uh, our Genesis 8 here. There we go. So there's a lot of like negative space here. Let me move my camera across here. So there's a lot of negative space here on the left and you have your character on the right. That's the de deliberately using the thirds guide, right? So they're deliberately using the thirds guide uh, to create that scene or that photography to make it more pleasing to the eye uh, in terms of like the way it looks. And I've used this a lot. So I use it a lot in my scenes. So let me give you some examples. So this is an example of me using the thirds guide. So this is from uh, Tiger Dragon Rebirth variant cover A, I think. And so wherever I use this thirds guide to its effect. So if you can think about this page, right? I made it into thirds using the thirds guide. So using the thirds guide in Dash Studio. So roughly, let's do roughly thirds here. So it's roughly about there. And then you've got kind of like the line coming down. This is roughly thirds. It's not exactly bang on, but it's good enough. And you can see from the thirds guide what I've done. So the top bit here, I've left on purpose. I didn't want anything on the top here. So I want the title to be visible here and the logo here, publisher logo. Now, as we come down to this kind of like middle section here, we've got Ayame here where she is to the left, right? She's off center. She's to the left more here. So she's taking more of this room here on the third guide. So deliberately put it on the left there so you can see some negative space here as well. You can see some more of the scene here on the right. And then we've got this character here on the bottom kind of like quadrant here, which is more or less this quadrant here. And you can see some negative space here. So that's me using the thirds guide here for this, creating this front cover here for cover A. That's me using it there. Now, obviously you don't always want to use be bang on with the thirds guide. You can break the rules. So as you get more experience with thirds guide, you can start breaking the rules. So what do I mean by this? You can literally have, hey, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna have the character right in the middle like this. And that is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with that, right? There's no right or wrong answer with the thirds guide saying, oh, you have to place a character on this section here, this line here, or the face needs to go exactly here, or on this section here, or the faces go here, or the faces go there, right? These are just, again, these are just tools that are going to help you to enhance your render based on the render you're trying to create, based on the whatever you're trying to create in your scene, right? It's going to help to create that composition of the scene. So I know a lot of people like, I want absolute truths and absolute whatever rules. No, some rules can be bent and other rules can be broken. And yes, I stole that from the matrix because it's bloody true, okay? 
Some rules can be bent, others can be broken. In this case, the third guide rule can be bent and it can be broken, right? So where have I broken this rule? So here we have the retail cover for Tiger Dragon the Rebirth here. So I'm gonna just divide this into thirds, show you how I've broken the thirds rule here because it was necessary to break it, right? It was like, hey, I wanna break the thirds rule guide. It doesn't apply to this particular part of the senior. So here's roughly thirds. It's not the best version of thirds guide, but it is roughly the thirds. And you can see, even though my character is to the right, the majority of the character is kind of like in the central here. This is what I want you to focus on. I want you to focus on the central portion here. I want you to do the reader or the person going by in the bookstore to focus on this character here, the eyes here, the kind of water dripping down here, the particular background here, all sunny and everything. There's a reason for that. And maybe if you look in the bottom right here, you can see the bruise here as well. So that's why I broke the third rule guide. I want you to focus on that particular area of the scene and why I didn't use the third guide in this cover here. Use this third guide, right? It's there for a reason to help you. It's a free tool. Let's use it, right? Let's use what's already available in Dash Studio that's going to help us to achieve our goals and make our composition, make our scenes look way better, way more professional and when somebody who's like a beginner sees your scene, they're gonna be like, there's something about this scene that's really good, but I don't know what it is, but you know what it is, right? You've done the work, you understand about composition, you understand when to use it and when not to use it. That's a professional, that's somebody who takes their work seriously, who sees himself as more than just an amateur, who sees himself as someone who's an artist, who's learning and growing and getting better. And then that's what this is all about. We're just using the tools that are available to us for free that is going to allow us because not many people use the free stuff, right? Why are you using the free stuff? It's available there. It's going to help your workflow. It's going to able you, allow you to do ABC better. Use it. It's there. Let's use it, right? Let's make the best use of the tools that are available to us. Tip number 10, always create a new camera in your seat. So this is a mistake I made very, very early on my journey and I didn't understand why. And then now whenever I create a new scene, I always create a camera straight away because of this mistake I made. So if you're a beginner, you're probably making this mistake. Sometimes even if you're intermediate, even if you're advanced, right, you sometimes make this mistake. Everyone makes mistakes, that's fine. The whole point is to learn from them and improve and work from there. So the reason why I ask you to create a camera as soon as you create a scene is because when you create a camera in this scene, it's going to remember the position of that camera. If you use a perspective view camera, it will always go to the original origin point, right? So for example, I'm gonna do this right now. So let me just move my Genesis 8 character somewhere. It doesn't matter where I move them. I'm gonna move them on purpose. It doesn't matter where they go. So let me just grab it and just move to the back. I'm gonna move the Genesis 9 as well. Let's just move that one to the back somewhere as well, okay? Let's move really, really far away, shall we? Okay, you can see this is the origin. This is where the perspective view is right now. I'm going to create a camera as well to show you that. So create a new camera. I'm going to use a perspective view as my starting point. So I'm going to move my camera to wherever these characters are. So very quickly, I mean, very roughly, it's not the best camera position. It doesn't have to be. The point is that I want to show you the example. So I'm going to just move it like this so you can see the kind of de the depth there, how far they are from each, each other. And now I'm going to move the perspective as well. So right, so let me move the perspective view as well. So you can see that I moved the perspective view here of my scene here. I'm using a perspective camera here. Now what will happen is when I save this scene and then I reopen it, the perspective view camera will go back to the origin point. However, the camera that I've created will stay at all those positions. This is very important. It's a workflow tip, right? And this is gonna help you out, especially when you're a beginner, you're gonna realize like, why is the camera when I open it, the perspective view camera just like jump to wherever? It's not jumping to wherever, it doesn't have any values that you can use it. It always will it will always go to the origin point. So remember our camera position here is to the right here you can see the one I created and my perspective one is uh the left right it's trying it's, it's almost the opposite of what camera where camera one is. So let me save this now. I'm gonna close it and then I'm gonna reopen it. I'm gonna show you what happens. Okay so the scene is loaded here and here you can see the perspective view is automatically selected and look where the camera is now, the perspective view. It's back at the origin point. Remember before the perspective view camera was on the left side here and it's gone back to the origin point. So let me go back to the camera now to show you like that camera is still there. It hasn't moved, it remembers it. 
So this is very important. It's like a workflow tip, but very important that you add a camera, you position it somewhere in the scene that you want it and it will remember where it is and that position will always stay there. Never use a perspective view camera to as your main like camera, right? Because it will always, when you load the scene, go back to the origin point, you will lose that position. This happened to me all the time when I first had Dash Studio. Like I said, I didn't know what I was doing and it's okay to not know something at the beginning, but it's not okay to not ever know, right? You need to learn, you need to, real, you need to learn and understand why this particular thing is happening and then you need to grow from there, you need to learn and grow from there. So it's never okay to stay stuck and say like, oh, I don't know, okay, I'll just, de I'll just stay with it, right? No, you need to understand why and then you can find a solution to that problem. Very, very important. That's tip number 10 there. That's gonna help you, again, workflow tip, but again, it's gonna help you to make sure you don't make the same mistakes I made. And the best way to learn is to learn from other people's mistakes because that stops you from making that mistake, which saves you time. So that's very, very important. So that's why I always say as well, if I can learn from somebody else's mistake, I don't have to make that mistake. I don't need to go through that pain, that failure, right? And uh, I can just realize that that person's done the suffering for me. They've found something, a piece of knowledge, a skill, something that shared it with me. Awesome. I don't have to go through that. I've just learned something and I can apply it. See if it works for me. If it does, awesome. If it doesn't, that's cool as well, right? At least I learned something along the way. So there you have it. Tip 6 to 10. Hope that helps you to become a better Dash 3D artist and also helps you to achieve your goals. Now, go and apply this knowledge. That's the main thing I want you to take away from this video. Take one tip from this video. Go and apply it. Insert it into your workflow so you can become better as a Dash 3D artist. And if you're interested in a heroic action fantasy story that's going to entertain you, empower you, and inspire you, like Tiger Dragon the Rebirth, Link is in the description down below, also in the pinned comments. Go and check it out. That's 24 pages of a heroic story that's going to entertain you, empower you, inspire you, of a 176-page book. So go and definitely check that out. And until the next video, always be learning.